بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين السلام عليكم أنا مزرقية يعقوب and I'll be talking about Jews 18 Jews 18 spans Surah Al-Mu'minun which is Ayah which is Surah 23 Surah Al-Nur and part of a section of Surah Al-Furqan Today I'll be speaking primarily about the first t nine ayats of Surah Al-Mu'minun but also making references to some of the other ayats in Surah Al-Mu'minun as well Now Surah Al-Mu'minun starts out with successful indeed are the believers and then after saying this Allah Ta'ala describes who the believers are so that the modern day person like us who are reading it can know oh if I want to be a believer these are the character traits I need to take on and Allah Ta'ala starts, starts by describing the prayer of the believer and the prayer of the believer is a prayer that is mindful where the, the prayer the person praying is present where the person praying is coming with a heart that is in awe of the majesty of its Lord it's coming with to the prayer with a heart that yearns for the prayer and loves the prayer and loves the the opportunity for connection. Now, after talking about this particular, about the prayer of the believer, the next ayah goes into the, how the believer guards his or her time. They're very mindful of time or how it's spent and they do not spend it in, in trivial things or when that's you know idle talk or idle pursuits and then it talks about the believer being one who gives of their wealth they purify their wealth they purify themselves through giving and this is another message for us today the idea of really supporting our institutions and building and giving of our time of our expertise as well as as well as of our wealth and then the ayah talks about chastity and guarding one's chastity and the next theme here is the idea of being people of integrity, being people of our word and people who honour the trust that are given to us and fulfil the trust. And then the last thing that is talked about, the last character trait, goes back to the prayer. And this time the word that's being used is a word that indicates protectiveness, guarding. And when we talk about what do we guard, we guard things that are of value, things that we love and things that we see as important. And this is how the prayer should be for us. It should be something that we see as precious, as valuable, and we seek to, to be protective of it. And one of the ways we protect the prayer is, or guard the prayer, is guarding the times, being really mindful and careful to do our prayers within the times that are allocated for the prayers. And ideally at the beginning of the prayer time. Now, after these particular ayats, we... we if you go further into the surah, you get to surah 20, ayah 23, all the way to ayah 49, Allah Ta'ala is giving us snapshots of people of the past. Now to understand the significance of this, we have to understand what was life like in Mecca when these ayahs were being revealed, when Surah Al-Mu'minun was being revealed. It was a time of persecution. Some Muslims had left, had fled to Aksum in order to find safety. It was a time of rejection, of isolation. The Muslims were under a boycott or an embargo, you could say. And it was, it was a difficult time period. And, the, and Allah Ta'ala, to give solace to the, to the Meccans, Allah Ta'ala shows them that this isn't a unique experience. This is something that, has ha that happens to people and happens to people of the past. So from Ayah 23 to Ayah 49, we're looking at the people of Nuh, wasalam, the people who came after him the people of Musa and Fir'aun, um, sorry, Musa and Harun, and also the interaction that Musa and Harun, alayhi salatu wasalam, had with Fir'aun, and the response he had to, he gave them. And Ayah 47 really encapsulates the, the perspective of the oppressive, or the arrogant oppressor, where, where Fir'aun says to the two of them that, you really expect for us to listen to you two human beings, where your people are enslaved to us. That says it all, really. And we look at the present day. This whole trait of arrogance is something that really affects the way a person interacts with someone else. And we know that we live in a time where we actually have to tell people that black lives matter. We have to tell people that they're human beings who need to be treated as such. And even when we do that, there's still this pushback. 
where people still do not want to do that. And they still want to be able to mistreat people, to isolate people, to persecute people, to ridicule people and feel that it's okay. And not only that, but to, but to shoot people, gun people down without any, without any um, reason to do so. And it's, it's, uh, it's really indicative of the state that we're in. But as you know, it isn't a new thing in America for these things to happen, for black people to be treated unfairly by um, certain aspects, certain parts of the systems that are in place. But what is new is the viral nature of media and the, and the ease in which a person can take a video of an occurrence and share it around the world. And what really strikes me here is that it's known that people are taking videos. We're seeing videos in our news feeds all the time. And yet people still commit acts of cruelty, unethical acts against um, um, black um, Americans, knowing fully well that these, are, these could be recorded or are being recorded. And yet they do not mind. They don't they actually care. And, we, and this reminds me of a, of a line in a book by Sheikh, by Sheikh Hanan Asma'u. The book is called Tanbih al Ghafilin. And it's a book that really goes into how to live right, how to live a good life in preparation for the hereafter. And in this, in this book, she mentions that the worst of people are those who do not have any, any problem, any concern or any, they don't care to be seen doing evil things. And this is a whole nother level of arrogance. May Allah Ta'ala protect us from that and remove all traces of arrogance from our hearts, inshallah. Now, I, to, to really bring this home, we're looking at the character traits of the believers. We're looking at how Allah Ta'ala gives solace to the believers through glad tidings, but also showing the believers that this is something that has happened before and this is something that you can get through. And for us, we're looking at, we, we, one of the things we, we can see from this and we can take solace is, is to know that this is something that we, we are getting through. We are working through and we will continue to do so. But also, the, we, we have the additional benefit of being able to take from these character traits, being able to learn what these traits are, being able to inculcate it into our lives being able to really use this time of Ramadan, which is like a great time to jumpstart new habits, to really approach the prayer differently. The prayer is so fundamental to being a believer, to being in that station of the believer, to being counted amongst the believers, that it's actually mentioned twice. And it's, it's this opportunity for us to really rectify our prayer and rectify our approach to the prayer. And, and, and not just for ourselves, but this is something we're gonna be modeling for our children and our families and our communities where we have this love and desire for the prayer. We have this awe of our, of our Lord and this love for him for, for, and, and, and the desire to, to, to engage in the prayer and a desire to give and a desire to um, guard one's chastity, to guard one's time, to guard one's um, resources and also to just be people of integrity. And this is the time to for if there's any of these particular traits that we need to work on, this is the best time subhanAllah to do that. May Allah Ta'ala cause us to be able to benefit from the, the blessings that Allah has given us, to be able to enter the prayer and approach the prayer with a state of gratitude, with mindfulness and love and awe and longing, and to be able to use these avenues that Allah has given us to success, to be able to gain success in this world and in the next. Amen. And...